So the first thing that we actually need to implement, and we're just gonna go do it right now and kind of get it out of the way. Um, we need to go create a, a quick shader. And the reason why I have to add a shader is unfortunately we're using a lot of preview packages and I'm not using some of the more uh, uh, unstable or very new packages for the ECS system. So at the moment we are using, and, and we want to be a peer ECS implementation. So we don't have an easy way to do uh, um, flipbook animations, right? Uh, I'm gonna be rendering this through the ECS system and it'll be a mesh renderer, uh, but we have no bone animation system that's easy to use. We have no way of saying, I wanna, here's a cell animation right here, our, a series of frames and then just run through these frames of a texture to animate flipbook style. Uh, that's not there out of the box at the moment. It will get there. It'll This will be much easier to do in the future. Right now, we kind of have to do a little extra step just if we want to kind of animate uh, a texture on screen. And I'm not going to animate it in the classic sense of a 3D animation where we are uh, uh, moving bones and um, adjusting the mesh, you know, like a skinned mesh uh, to update that. We're not doing that. I'm doing, we're doing very simple animation. Like I said, we are developing a Space Invaders game. Uh, so we don't need 3D type of animations. We need 2D type of animations. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to go write a very, very simple shader. This, uh, if you don't understand what's going on here, it's fine. Just copy what I'm doing and make sure you have it there. Uh, but I think you'll be able to follow along on this. It's not a complex shader. Uh, so to use the shader, we're going to actually be using the shader graph. And we're going to create a new shader. We're going to create an unlit shader because uh, we don't care if this is a lit or not lit. And actually an unlit graph, not a shader. These are the uh, classic shaders. We want to use the shader graph. And we want to create an unlit graph. And we'll call this our sprite animator because essentially that's what we're doing. We have to create our own kind of sprite animation uh, um, shader graph. But again, it's not complicated. Oops, let's pull this out. So you guys can see what is gonna happen here. There's really not that many nodes that we need to see. Uh, make sure we set this up correctly for you guys. We're gonna show it on a quad, not on a sphere, because this is a 2D versus a 3D. And we wanna just make it kind of simple. Okay, so we have our unlit master and we have uh, uh, some data here. Most of this data, we kind of don't care about for like vertex data. All I care about is setting color and all I really care about is setting alpha because we're not gonna be changing vertex data. That's gonna happen uh, by the color tag. So to make this work, we need to take an input. Let's take an input of a texture, a 2D texture. We'll call it main text. Let's expand this if I can for you guys. Uh, let's give this a default, just so we can see when we're developing this. I have an animated sprite, let's call her Mothership. Was, oops, let's go ahead and default that. And we should be good here. So now let's drag this on so that we have a reference to this main texture. And then we wanna sample this sample our 2D texture, and that's our input. So when we do this, we can now see right from the preview that we're just gonna sample this whole texture. It is three cells, right? It's a frame animator. It's a sprite animation. And we wanna take the RGB, and we just wanna output this to color. And then we wanna take the uh, alpha, and we wanna just output our alpha here, just so that it can be, you know, get rid of the background color and things like that. So. This is, if we were to render this right now, obviously all we would be showing is all three cells. It's not actually gonna show a cell or a, an animated sprite. It's really just gonna show this. And that's okay, this is a good start for us. And we have our main texture. What we wanna be able to do is adjust the UVs. Because if we adjust the UVs, uh, essentially we can say where in this sprite should we render. And then we can do that um, through a system. And there's actually a built-in node called a flipbook. And a flipbook makes things very, very easy. And this becomes our UV system. Uh, and now we can control how many cells do we have, how, how many cells width-wise, how many cells do we have height-wise, uh, what tile should we um, show. So if we were to 
kind of hard code this and say, we know we have from a width standpoint, we have uh, three, right? And from a height standpoint, we have one. So instantly the flipbook does the math for us and say, okay, just render that first cell. And as we go through tiles here, tile zero, tile one, in tile two, it just works. So all we really now need to do is how can we automate the animation of adjusting this tile, right? If we see that this tile kind of just flips through, how can we automate this tile? Or how can we animate this tile property? And if we do that, then we have a sprite animator. It's pretty simple, pretty much that simple. Uh, so to do that, let's actually add a couple more parameters here. I wanna add a float or a vector one, and we'll call this uh, columns. And we'll default to three. I mean, we'll be able to adjust this in the editor. That's why I'm adding these as kind of input parameters to the shader so that we can use this for multiple uh, sprite inputs. Uh, let's drag this out here. So instead of this being hard coded, it'll now be based off that input. Do the same thing for rows. And default that to one. Just makes it easier for us to debug on here. We have that. So all of our data still works. We're still good. Still have everything we need. And let's add one, just one more while I'm doing all this. We'll call this speed. Basically, how fast should we flip through our cells? How fast should we flip through our cells? And we're going to use that momentarily. The other thing I need to make sure we're doing uh, is if you notice here, there is this hybrid instance experimental. Remember how we're using the hybrid renderer for ECS system. We want to make sure that these are all checked. And what this will mean, I'll explain it when I get to materials, uh, but we want to make sure that we are batch rendering all of our processes. And by batch rendering, uh, we can get a major performance improvement if we're trying to render a lot of the same mesh or same material. The same material has been rendered over and over and over on screen. All of that can kind of get batched up on what we send to the graphics card and we get a major performance improvement. Now, if we want to send the same material, but use different material properties, like different columns, different rows, different speeds, maybe one ship uh, animates faster than the other ship, so they have different speed properties, this needs to uh, make sure we set this hybrid instance so that you have the ability to use the same material, but change the property in different entities. Uh, so we have our flipbook now, we have our columns and rows. Now what we do is we need to figure out how we're going to animate this tile thing. So to animate this tile, uh, the first thing that we can do, so let's just move this stuff over here. Uh, let's add a time node. So this is where the majority of our animation is going to happen because it should animate over time. And we have our speed node and we want to multiply that. Because if we take time, multiply it by speed, we can either slow down or speed up uh, the, the flipbook tile. And if we just did this on its own, if we just connect this now, and if we go and set a default for speed and say default of one, you'll see that it's going to start flipping through. And it's not actually flipping cell by cell. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is. Uh, it is smoothly uh, um, going from zero to three. So it's going to go from 0 to 0 0.1 to 0.2 to 0.3, right? And what we actually want to do is we want to go in whole numbers. I want to go 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, right? Because I want to flip through these cells. Right now, we're just rotating through the texture. So it's a start, but it's not exactly what we want to do. But uh, via simple math, I know uh, we're trying to, I'm going to keep it math light, but there is a little bit of math we need to use. And we can use a module. Uh, on this and uh, get rid of that. So now we have a module. Let's delete you. That's going to be our output. We need to set what we're moduling are, right? What's our other side of the equation here? And to do that, we're actually going to create a new node of a multiply. And I'm going to drag these down here as secondary references. 
and we're just going to multiply these together. So the rows times the columns gives us the total number of cells. This is a bit of a shortcut. FYI, it's a bit of a shortcut. Um, this requires that every uh, that there are an equal number of cells in every row and every column. If there are gaps, if there is a empty, say there's four and then three for two rows, right? Four on the first row and then just three and that last cell is empty. Uh, this would fail. Instead, what we would have to do, and I'm just keeping it simple today, we'd add another property for the total um, cell count. And instead of multiplying, we would just use that total cell count. But for now, we can actually feed that in here. And if we feed this in here, we'll start to get closer to what we want. Now we are doing a module. And uh, the problem with the module here is it's doing a float base modulus. So it's not giving us whole numbers. So it's still kind of giving us uh, numbers in between. So to fix that, all we want to do is floor it. So no matter, we don't want all the numbers in between. I just want the whole numbers. And if we then pop this into tile, if I did everything as I expect to do, we now have a flipbook animation. And we can go, if we change speed here, right? We change speed to two, it will render or it will animate twice as fast. I know it's a very simple animation. Uh, we can change it very slow. We can make it very quick. Depending on what we want to do, uh, we have this option. So this is how we can implement uh, via a shader, just a real simple sprite animator. It's a real simple uh, sprite animator, but now we can use this in a very optimized ECS game using uh, using batch rendering. Because this is a shader, we can use the same material, which is the same texture, and everything should just work. So let's go back to a very slow speed, just from a sample perspective. But that's it. This is our shader, guys. I said I didn't want to have to spend too much time doing this, so let's go ahead and save this. Uh, let's close this down Ooh, so that we have it. So we have a sprite animator. It's a shader we can use where we need to if we're going to use any sprite animations.